Good morning, guys. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Papa Tom. I am a part of Yiching's Life, and we are the Cade family. Uh, thank you very much for watching our videos and for supporting us. We appreciate it very much. Um, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. And, you know, feel free to share this on your uh, Facebook pages or wherever you share social media things. Uh, we're really trying to get our channel up to the 100,000 subscriber mark. Um, that will give Yiching, will finally get the uh, silver uh, plaque a reward from YouTube for having 100,000 subscribers. So we're about 20,000 away from that. So we're gonna really try to do that to, to get that done because we wanna have a big celebration and a party. Um, you know, we've had this channel for a few years and it's, it's a lot of fun, but we really wanna get that first award. The one after that, you have to get to a million and I don't see that happening anytime soon. I've, I've often asked um, you guys, like, what are some ideas? What are some things that, you know, we can talk about? I know we do a lot of family stuff with the kids and watching the kids is cute and seeing what we're doing in our lives. But um, there's been a lot of different questions about, you know, wanting to know what it's like to live in Florida. You know, is it a good place for Filipinas? Um, you know, I thought, well, I'll give you my, my opinion on um, Florida. And we specifically live in the West Palm Beach area. West Palm Beach is the, the biggest town here, city, city town. Uh, so we live outside of West Palm Beach. We live in Lake Worth. So if you're looking at a map, West Palm Beach is the epicenter of the coastline here. Um, Palm Beach is on the other side of West Palm Beach, which is a, across the water, which is where all the billionaires live. It's where Donald Trump lives and Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots and just lots of really, really wealthy people. Um, so West Palm Beach is a pretty high, uh, how do you describe it? It's the, the people that live in this area, there's a lot of really wealthy people. So, so it's kind of, it caters to the wealthy, the famous, that type of thing. Um, but right next to West Palm Beach is Lake Worth, uh, Boynton Beach, Delray Beach, Boca Raton, um, and Jupiter's on the other side. So it, it's just a, there's a lot of communities, one right after the other. So they're all right next to each other, but you just, you know, you can just go up and down the beach in any direction. It's just one town, the next town, the next town, the next town. There's not, there's not a lot of space in between those towns. So it just, it just blends right into the next town. So, um, so yeah, so is this a good place to live for Filipinas? What if, you know, could, should Filipinas move to Florida? And if so, what about the West Palm Beach area? So, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. So there's 50 states in the United States of America. Um, Florida is the closest to the weather and environment of the Philippines. Okay, so it's the warmest state. So that's pretty similar to the Philippines. Um, it, the whole state is surrounded by ocean. So there's a beach line, the entire length of the whole state. Um, so that's like the Philippines, um, palm trees. There's a lot of seafood here because we're right by the ocean. So that's similar to the Philippines. So weather wise, just like the Philippines, um, geography, it's pretty similar to the Philippines. Um, doesn't rain as much as the Philippines rainy season. And it does gets somewhat cold in the winter times. It doesn't really, it doesn't snow here. I think the last time it snowed in West Palm Beach was 1977. So you're not going to see snow if you live here. You're, you know, I haven't really had to wear a jacket this winter at all. It's already March. Um, but the weather's great. Um, so most Filipinas would feel right at home living here. Okay. They're not going to have to change their wardrobes. Um, you know, you're, you're going to feel just as comfortable as you were in the Philippines, except everything here is air conditioned. So what I noticed, especially even with Brian told me last night, the Aherns, you know, he's in my house. He's like, yeah, yeah, I need to borrow a sweatshirt because he's just not used to the air conditioning like we are here because we have air conditioning in every building here. Every place you go has air conditioning. So it's it's usually between 68 to 74 degrees inside any business or building or home here in Florida. Um, but you can always turn it off. Um, so living here, what would you do? Jobs. Okay, there is a lot of jobs here in, in West Palm Beach and, and in Florida, especially here on the coastline. Um, what, what you'll find when you live in a place where there's lots of millionaires and billionaires like there are here in Florida, they don't work. They don't do jobs. They, they 
do their own thing. Their money works for them. So there's a, they like to go out to eat. They like to go places, shopping. So there is a lot of service jobs here, okay? And I'll tell you what I do. So I used to be in healthcare for, you know, 25 plus years. And when Iching and I got married, when we were living in Texas, I wanted to come back to Florida to West Palm Beach because this is where Bella lives, my daughter, uh, with her mother and um, her stepfather. They live here in Jupiter, which is right next to West Palm Beach. So I needed to come back to Florida so I could be here and, and spend and share time with my daughter. Um, the problem was my career, I couldn't find the same paying job here in West Palm Beach. So I had no choice, but I took a, a lower paying, lesser responsibility position just so I could be here. So I sacrificed money and my job in order to be here with my daughter, which is fine. You know, I have enough, we have enough money to live on. That's, it's no problem. Um, the, the job that I do or did basically there's only one of those in every hospital. So in order for me to even apply for the job that I would do, the one person in every hospital would have to be leaving and they would have to not have somebody already working there ready to take that position. So, you know, it, it had always been easy for me to, I could find that job. I would just take the job in different cities or different states in America so I could just move. But now I'm, I'm only located here and I don't want to leave here because this is where my daughter lives. And if I left, I wouldn't be able to see her um, as much. So that's why I'm here. So I've, I've adjusted what I do for a living. And a little over a year and three months ago, four months ago, I was working at a nursing home and COVID was still going on and nursing homes are where the elderly go to live the rest of their lives until they, you know, pass away. But those were also the hardest hit areas for COVID because if COVID gets into the elderly like that, then the elderly can't survive flu and cold and, and things like that as, as easily as you or I can. So the nursing homes, people weren't checking in to live in the nursing homes nearly as much as they were in the past. So nursing homes were all losing money because they didn't have enough residents moving in and living there. So, so they were cutting positions and my position just happened to be one that they were decided to eliminate. Um, basically someone else just had to do my job. So I got laid off because of COVID. Um, but it's okay. I found another job a few weeks later. And I just, when I was in college a long time ago, I used to wait tables and bartend in hotels. And that's how I paid my way through college. And I liked it and it was really good money. So I found a job at a Marriott property here in West Palm Beach. And I just started serving in the restaurant, doing banquets. And I ended up making more money because of all the tips people give you than I was making working as a salaried manager in the hospital. So it's, it's a weird dynamic. Um, and every restaurant, every hotel is hiring constantly. They never have enough people. So, you know, if you have, it, it takes a particular type of person to be able to wait tables or, or work in a tip position, but you know, you could do room service, you could work in the restaurants. Um, you know, I, I can easily make three, four, five, a thousand dollars a day in tips. So, you know, that, not every day is a thousand dollars in tips, but just do the math. You know, say it's four hundred dollars a day, you know, in cash that you're making, you're going home with, and you work five days. That's two thousand dollars in cash. That's pretty good money, guys. Two thousand dollars a week, um, and then four weeks, two. That's eight thousand dollars a month. Um, you know, do the math. Um, plus, also don't forget that if you're a, a tipped employee. You also get paid an hourly pay of basically $8 an hour, $7.98, I think it is. So $8 an hour, you still get paid before you even make any tips. So add that on to what you're making in your tips and you can easily, easily we make more money than the managers. And, you know, it just takes one good customer to like, you know, give you a hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars there. And you're like, wow, made a lot of money. So every restaurant's hiring. You can go to any restaurant here and get a job learning how to do it. Even with no experience, you could get a job to do something like that. It's really easy. And probably that's the, the, the most money you could make quickly without needing any kind of degree or experience. Right. Um, and then hospitals are always hiring too. So you could get an, 
you know, that you could work in. You could be a nurse's aide. Nursing is probably the the if you, if you went to nursing school and got your nursing degree, every hospital here would hire you instantly. They need nurses. Every hospital needs nurses. Um, but nursing is, you know, it's a little bit different. You're you're making an hourly rate, and it's a good hourly rate. It's probably twenty five to thirty bucks an hour, maybe. I don't know even you know there's a lot of competition for hospitals to to find nurses um so if you if you're a nurse or you're getting your nursing degree this is a great place to come and the hours are endless a lot of people a lot of nurses i know work at two different hospitals so they'll work three days here and get their 40 hours and they'll work three days at another hospital get it 40 more hours and they still have one day off and it's you know two full-time jobs with one day off so they make a lot of money um if you're not a nurse nurses aides nursing assistants, you don't, you, you know, you, that's like a six month class to get your certification and you could work in the hospitals probably making 17 to 20 bucks an hour um, just as a nurse's aide. So you're not really a nurse. You just go in and take temperatures and, and, you know, help answer call lights and, and move patients from one room to another, something like that. You could work in dietary where you deliver their meals. Um, every, every hospital here there's a lot of hospitals is hiring and I'll, uh, here's here's how to think about florida florida is where all the old people in america come to die and not to be morbid but it's <clears throat> you know the older they get they want to get out of the places where there's snow and cold weather florida is a great place and it's known for the, a ret as a retirement state so this is a place full of old people and old people get sicker Old people go to the hospital more, so that's why the hospitals are always full. There's there's never a shortage of jobs in a hospital, um, just because of the the population of the state of Florida. Um, you know, then you could just do your traditional jobs. You could do um, working department stores. I mean, there's so much shopping here. You could work in WalMarts. You could work in Targets, grocery stores. Um, you know, if you're if you don't have any experience doing anything else, but there's thousands and thousands of jobs available here. So if, if this is a place you wanted to come, easily you could find a job. Um, now, where would you live? So, you know, if, if you were a Filipina and you were moving here and you didn't know anybody and you were going to look for a place to live, the first thing I would recommend is to go online and Google realtors. Okay, find a realtor, call the realtor's office and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to be moving to West Palm Beach or Boynton Beach or wherever, and I'm looking for a home to rent or to buy homes are expensive right now they're they're not as expensive as they were last year they've the values have gone up but they're starting to come back down um due to inflation and and our great president joe biden that was sarcasm he's not a great president um but even rental prices skyrocketed too so the, the my best advice you could look online yourself but there people are snatching them up pretty quickly still and they're pretty expensive so um, housing is a challenge here. Um, I can, I'll tell you our house. So we, we moved into our house three years ago, almost three years ago. And we rent, we rent a three bedroom house, two bathroom with a garage and a little backyard with a fence in backyard. Um, and our rent is almost $2,000 a month, which is pre pandemic pricing. Okay. If we moved out today and our landlord put this house up for rent, he would probably easily get two thousand eight hundred to three thousand dollars a month. So because we are still renting it and he he's raised the rent a little bit, we're not paying the the going rate, but that's what rents are for homes in nice neighborhoods that are safe. Um, three bedrooms, even two bedrooms are probably going to be in close to two thousand or more. Um, so a realtor can really help you find the right place to meet your budget apartments. You're probably looking at, you know, a one bedroom apartment, probably 1500, 1600, $1,700 at the lowest. Um, you know, then there are some rougher areas. Every city has like the, the low income, cheaper, more crime ridden areas. And there's a few of those here, just like any place. So you might find them even a little bit cheaper there, but it's still going to be expensive. Um, so my advice would be to find a realtor because you don't have to pay the realtor to find you the place. They're going to get a commission from whoever you decide to rent from. So it won't cost you a single penny. They'll do all the work for you. They'll send you links like here, this place costs this much, this place costs this much. And they'll be able to see homes and apartments and places to live that become available before the general public. So that would be my advice there. 
Um, or, you know, you could share a room with someone, rent a, rent a room in someone's house or become roommates with somebody and then cut your expenses in half. But, um, but yeah, guys, overall, it's a great place to live. We love it here. Once, you know, once you live here and experience the beauty and the weather, you know, it's hard to want to leave and go someplace else. Um, but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. One eternity later. Hey guys, we're in the backyard. It's Team Cade versus Team Ahern. Okay, I'm going to kick it in the air. Whoever catches it gets to have extra ice cream tonight. Yeah. Okay? Gets to have whatever dessert they want in the house. They can have pudding or jellos or ice cream or chocolates. Okay, and no pushing each other, okay? So I'm going to throw it really high in the air. Ready? And here we go. You have to catch it in the air. Okay, give me again. Again. Okay. Ah! Now go, go farther back so I can throw it higher in the air, and that way you have a better chance. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, ready? Here goes. Ah! No! Oh! Did Josephine catch it? Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, really you get extra dessert today. I'm really glad that one of the girls caught it. Okay, this time go farther because I'm going to kick it in the air really far. Okay, ready? Oh. Yeah. Wow, good catch, Bella. Nice. Let's do it. Again. Bruh. Oh, that didn't get him this high. I get <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Here, you can try to kick it to him. Can I kick it after? Yep, just don't kick it in the road, okay? <laughs> I wanna kick it, I wanna kick it. No. Ah! <laughs> and it bounced off her head. Okay, don't touch the ball. That's going to be the starting line, okay? Um, you're going to run to me, and then the first person to run back and pick the ball up. Back. Huh? Back. Yeah, you have to run down and then run back, and whoever picks the ball up first wins. Okay. Have to touch you? Yeah, you have to touch my hand. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. Go back. I got to say, on your marks, get set, and when I say go. Okay, so everybody get back and get ready. I gotta hold the phone with one hand. Now this will be a short one. Okay, everybody get behind the ball. Okay, ready? On your marks. On your marks. Get set, go! Oh, it was so close. That was a tie. I'm gonna race that far. That's really far. Okay.
Was that too far? Are you guys tired? Yeah. A little bit? That get you tired? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, good Dad, catch. You're out. Dad, you're out. Dad, you're out. I'm still in. We'll start the rules in a minute. No, don't throw hard. See, you're too close to him. <laughs> 